All right, so today is Thursday, June 30th, and we are in the middle of the e evening stream, and uh, a patch just announced, they just announced that a patch is going to hit in, like, hours, which, like, they're not even waiting until Tuesday. So by the time you see this video, it might already be out. So here we go, from Josh Davis, a.k.a. Groucheroo. He says, hi all, we're back with an update regarding the June 28th balance changes and our next steps. In this post, we'll outline our plan for the next month and provide a preview of a small balance update coming later today. Our earlier forum post on this topic can be found here. Uh, if you've been living under a rock or maybe you know, you're just a very busy body and you haven't had time to play this week, there was a big patch on Tuesday and it wrecked a lot of things. Uh, Warriors uh, got the worst of it. Catalyst got it kind of bad. Uh, Engineers got it the best. And, you know, some things are completely out of hand. Uh, I, I've done multiple videos on that. You can go back to those if you want more information. All right. Today, in just a few hours, we'll be releasing a hotfix update that includes changes for the Elementalist, Engineer, Revenant, and Ranger. These changes are previewed at the bottom of this post. For context, hotfixes are emergency updates that typically focus on addressing bugs, crashes, and exploits in the latest release. Because of the short dev time for hotfix releases, less than 24 hours from start to finish, they don't go through the multi-week release process that we normally use to increase stability and quality. This means that today's balance changes are smaller in scope and lower risk. That means that, means that they had less time to test it, but they're pretty certain it's safe to put this on the live environment. We felt that it was appropriate to bend the rules a bit and make progress on your concerns rather than wait for the next scheduled release. Honestly, that's a good thing. Um, if you hang out in the uh, <laughs> like the, the the Reddit or the forums of the game right now, it's it's kind of a wildfire. Uh, Go War to Facebook is very peaceful though. <laughs> uh, next week. Last Monday, I mentioned that we'll be drafting the design notes for the June 28th release. Uh, sorry, last Monday. I think I said next. Last Monday, I mentioned that we'll be drafting the design notes for the June 28th release. We made some progress, but we chose to refocus our time on today's hotfix and future planning. We'll share the design commentary uh, sometime next week. Note, Monday is a holiday. So... What that is, uh, for people that don't know about that, is basically the why. You know, for example, if they're just like, you know, a while back, they nerfed Catalyst because they said their reasoning was Catalyst that provides quickness is doing 15% more damage than every other class while they are providing quickness. Now, it's like, okay, maybe they didn't, you know, do that uh, very well. I, I think they went way overboard with that nerf. But the point I'm trying to get at is they haven't yet explained the why of why they did all these changes, which I think would severely help things right now. And that's what we're waiting on. They did already say that in the future they're going to post that and then tell us the changes, and then wait, and then do them, uh, because you know they, they learned a lot from this, uh, this fire. July 19th. After today, our next opportunity to make changes will be the July 19th release. Uh, that is, looking at my calendar here, uh, three, uh, is it two? No. It, it's between two, it's like two and a half weeks away. Um, the build for this release is already locked down and moving through the pipeline, so we don't have much time to make changes here. Our priority will be to address Furious Burst, the Warriors plus 5%, uh, wait, hold on. I skipped ahead, I skipped ahead, I skipped ahead. Uh, we went through the pipeline. The build for this release is already, okay. After today, our next opportunity to make changes will be the July 19th release. The build for this release is already locked down and moving through the pipeline, so we don't have much time to make changes here. Our priority here will be to address the Furious Burst, which is the Warriors plus 5% critical hit chance trait that's currently residing in the arms specialization. We may make additional changes in this release as we continue to monitor game metrics and your feedback, but from a development best practices standpoint, we'll be focusing our attention on the following release. August 2nd. As we mentioned earlier this week, we've added a follow-up balance patch to our schedule on August 2nd. For that release, we'll be looking at addressing Warrior Banners and Chronomancer's relatively low damage output through Chronomancer's specific traits and increasing the damage on core weapons, like the Treatment Ranger is getting today. Oh, I can't wait to read that. Once we've released today's hotfix, we'll move on to planning the details of this update. Uh, I want to pause there really quickly because I can already hear the Karens that don't understand... Um, like IT, like, you know, August 2nd, what? That's so far away. Like, 
it takes a while to do this stuff. Like, they made a huge mistake with this last release. They didn't tell us what they were doing until a Friday, and then the patch was set to go live, you know, Tuesday. And so Monday, there was one workday in between the those two of those things. So, but the, the fact is, they probably had written the code for that patch, like, weeks beforehand. Uh, it, it, it takes a while to, like, first, you know, figure out exactly what they want to do, make the code for it, make sure it doesn't break anything, or else you have something crazy like... Uh, I remember a while back, we were getting fall damage every time we descended on our sky scales from a patch that didn't do anything with sky scales. Like, if they if they have to test it as much as they can, and inevitably some some stuff will get through. So that's that's why it's going to it's going to take time. Uh, October fourth, the next major professions update is slated for October fourth. Reminder that release dates are subject to change. A public preview of that update and its design goals will be given well in advance. As promised, prior to that release, we'll also share the long-term vision for GW2 profession balance and how it applies to be the EMPVP worldly world. So on that topic, uh, I want to pause there for a second. I, I want to talk about my, my thoughts on that. So Guild Wars 2 uh, you, it was a game that originally had no tanks and no healers. Now it is a game that very much has healers of many different classes and, you know, tanks for various fights. Some are better than others. Um... As, but the thing is, is the design goals. Like, for example, in my mind, a druid is a healer. Uh, now, I main NG now. I swapped from druid to NG back when uh, Scrappers got quickness. Um, but in my mind, a druid is a healer. However, in PvP, it's kind of like a duelist because lots of annoying roots and the astral power system is not great for healing. Uh, I would love to play a support druid in PvP, but I kind of feel like after years of it just being ignored, that's just not their design goal. Like, that's just not what they want. Um, you know, and they even said a while back that they were specifically working on honing in on, at, at that time, they said Tempest, Core Guardian, and Shout Warrior as the three main supports that they were working on balancing for PvP. But was, there was no mention of any of the other supports. So, sometimes, the thing that the game developer is going for is not the same as what the community thought was going to happen. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing either. I'm just saying <laughs> it's a thing. So, you know, there's that. Uh, wrapping up. We, I especially, learned a lot this week. And we're actively discussing ways to prevent situations like this from happening again. Thank you for your patience and support. Josh Grouch Davis, Game Director. So, that is the future. Let's look at today. Oh, the formatting is still weird on this page. <laughs> <laughs> like every other update for the last month, they've had the, the release pages, the formatting's been weird. Okay, this is what is hitting today, possibly during the very stream I'm in the middle of right now. Elementalist. In the June 28th update, the Zephyr Speed trait was updated to give 5% crit chance, but it was only active while in air attunement. Yup. Staying in one attunement does not match with the gameplay of the Elementalist profession, so we've updated the trait to apply the crit chance to all attunements. The movement speed buff from Zephyr Speed is still only applying while attuned to air. Uh, I'm going to highlight this so it's legible. Zephyr Speed, 5% crit hit uh, chance of this trait is active regardless of attunement. Text description is not yet updated to match the new functionality. This will be addressed in a future update. Okay? All right. Uh, Tempest. Tempest was given access to Alacrity via the Lucid Singularity trait in the June 28th update. Um, I have done no Tempest testing myself. Uh, it has been, what, three days uh, since the... Uh, <laughs> thank you, Evil. It has been... Engie rifle goes BBRRR. <laughs> BRRRR. Three, it has been three days since the update. Uh, I have played, like, half the classes. Ellie is not one of them. Uh, I have heard from others that the, the Tempest uh, way of generating alacrity does not feel good. Uh, we've seen some interesting build experimentation since then, but we feel that the current base alacrity duration from the trait is too short to be fully effective. We're increasing it slightly today, and we'll keep an eye on it for further adjustments. Lucid Singularity, base duration of alacrity applied by this trait increased from 6 to 7 seconds. That means if you were running full boon duration gear, it would be going from 12 to 14. So, you know, keep in mind, a lot of supports run boon duration gear, so instead of a 1 second increase per application, it would be 2. Um, all right. Engineer. Uh, I did a whole vid I don't want to discuss on this too much right now. Obviously, Engineer right now is running rampant. Um, they, they gave us Rifle, 
It's really freaking good. Or I, should, I shouldn't say they gave us a rifle. They buffed rifle to a usable state. It has been basically um, hardly used for a very long time. But, you know, now it's it's essentially just like a machine gun. You know, this is, this is no quickness. Uh, because of that and the fact that it synergizes with like every single trait here, even the one attack of the engineer with the mech also attacking are quite strong, quite strong. Um, and I believe right now it's up there with Mesmer for highest DPS damage dealer, uh, but it's also easier to play. So, you know, you're running around, you're, you're seeing a lot of in, you know, players that maybe before couldn't pull big numbers suddenly popping off and pulling huge numbers. And uh, although I haven't gone into World v. World since the patch hit, I've heard it's mostly just people shooting each other with engineer rifles. <laughs> with the updates to rifle and aim-assisted rocket, we wanted to increase the viability of power mech builds by building synergy between aim-assisted rocket and mech arms jade cannons. We overshot here. Since the mech also gains the benefit of the rocket trait, it is adding a large amount of passive damage that does not require direct player input and has caused the mech pet to deal more damage than we'd like. I can say from my own testing, uh, I was running around with the NG gun build, except I was using Punchbot uh, mech, which you know gives might, and I was uh, I doing some content with other mechanists, and they were many thousands of damage per second above me. And I would, and what it finally was, it was this. It was literally that one trait. You know, going from punch mech to gun mech, and then gun mech would get the rockets. Uh, it's it's quite noticeable. Um. Uh, is adding a large da, 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 da. We plan on making further specific adjustments to aim-assisted rocket in the August 2nd update. But before then, we're making some quick corrections by reducing the damage output of the pet's auto attacks, particularly with jade cannons. We're also reducing the range of the rifle ability jump shot to keep enterprising engineers from going places they don't belong. I wonder, so jump shot uh, right now, for people who don't know, is, is just you you boop, you do that. It, well, it looks weird in Mistlock Sanctuary because there's no gravity, but you literally jump and crash down. Uh, it does a ton of damage. Um, it has 900 range right now. Uh, the fact that they're reducing it by a mere 100 makes me think someone was using it to do like a fractal skip or something. I don't know. Uh, someone in my chat is saying it was used to get into some World View World Towers. They shouldn't have been able to. Uh, okay, Mechanist. Jade Cannons. Damage multiplier reduced from 0.6 to 0.35 in PvE, and 0.28 to 0.2 in PvP and World v. World. That's pretty major. I'm also not surprised. Let's see what else they did. Mech Arm Single Edge Cutters. Uh, that's the blade-armed mech that uh, does the bleeding. Damage multiplier reduced from 0.6 to 0.45 in PvE. The damage multiplier of the final strike reduced from 1.2 to 0.0 in PvE only. Hmm. I am surprised on that one. I have not heard anything about Blade Arm Mech uh, since the patch hit. Uh, I, I, I don't know anything uh, about it being like OP or anything right now, so that one does kind of surprise me. Um, Mech Arm's High Impact Drivers, that is the punch bot uh, that gives might to nearby allies. Damage multiplier reduced from 0.6 to 0.45 in PvE. The damage multiplier of the final strike reduced from 1.2 to 0.8 in PvE. Um, okay. Now, this will also affect your support mechanists in your parties. Now, support mech does more damage while supporting than any other support, I believe, in the game. Like, if, I, if I'm healing on my druid, I might push out 2k DPS because, you know, my, the aboga does 2k DPS. Uh, while you're an astral form or medkit on an engineer, you do zero damage directly from you. The mech, however, puts out like 5 to 10k. Like, while you're supporting, it puts out, like, 5 to 10. So, uh, it doesn't surprise me that this is happening. Um, of course, I'm a little bummed out as a mechanist enjoyer, but it doesn't surprise me. Jade Dynamo. The quickness of... Oh my god, I freaking called it. I called this. The quickness applied by this trade has been reduced from 4 to 2.5 seconds in PvE, PvP, and World v. World. I'm surprised it's still that high, if I'm honest. Uh, fixed a bug that caused the mech command skill cooldown reduction to not apply in PvP. So, yeah, not surprised by that at all. Um, I don't know why they gave us quickness to begin with. So, you know, the Jade Dynamo right here, uh, if you've got your... Come on, come on, come on, come on. Are you serious? Come on. Yes, Guild Wars 2 is a bug-free game with nothing wrong. It's entirely balanced. All right, there's my mech. 
All right, so if I just like, you know, here, use a mech skill, uh, you'll see, boom, quickness. Use another one, quickness. Use another one, quickness. And you basically got 12 seconds of quickness on demand here. And it's also those same numbers in PvP, which is insane. That's insanely good. Like a class that, does, you know, Mechanus doesn't provide quickness much, but being able to just do that. And if you are uh, running, I think, uh, gadgets or tool belts or something, you can get it even shorter and have really high uptime of quickness while just machine gunning people. Um, it's incredibly good. <laughs> I don't think Mech needed it. And I said in a video yesterday, I, I, I think this is one of the things that needs to be toned down badly. So, yeah, uh, four to 2.5 seconds. Okay, all game modes, all game modes. Um, I did not know about that bug there, but it's good that that's getting fixed. All right, Ranger. Uh, let's see, I'm looking at uh, you know, my Twitch chat right now. So people said that they've already done some napkin math on this. They think that uh, you know, the, the, the changes is gonna nerf the damage by about 3K. It's still going to be quite good. If that's true, if the, the numbers in my Twitch chat are true right now, that is that is still quite good. Yeah, you're you're basically going from like you know, I, I think it was a teapot that said uh, there's like A tier, S tier, and Eldritch Horror tier, which is what Mechanist is. It's still gonna be like A tier at least. It's still gonna be quite good. So if you're like, oh no, I just got this fancy new rifle, now the sky is falling. It's not. It's fine. It's still going to be quite good. Now, after August 2nd, we'll see. But right now, it's still quite good, my friends. It's still quite good. All right. Um, Ranger. Soul Beast damage output. Uh, oh, hang on a sec. Uh, that's to APOC if you've got one. Um, Soul Beast damage output previously relied on lining up a burst window with the skill Sikkim and One Wolf Pack were active, paired with the damage from the Axe offhand skill Whirling Defense. Yep, Axe 5. The number one hardest hitting Ranger skill if you use it correctly. Outside of this, Soul Beasts have low sustained damage. This created a high skill floor for playing the spec correctly, making it difficult to create a strong baseline performance for players who did not execute on or were not aware of the mechanics to produce this damage window. Yep, and although I knew how to do it, I myself, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to do the effort for that, and so I always played Kandi on my Ranger. Because Kandi, you didn't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, uh, you, uh, ra Ranger, Soul Beast, uh, you basically, if possible, you wanted to be standing in like a fire field, you wanted to have Sikkim active, you wanted to have just weapon swapped and used an interrupt on the target to proc twice as vicious, have just used one wolf pack, and have just interrupted the boss to break his break bar, and with all those things combined, you hit Axe 5. And if nothing interrupts you, you do like hundreds of thousands of damage, maybe millions. It just you gotta you gotta really line everything up. Uh, in the June twenty eighth patch, one wolf pack was changed to have a lower but more consistent impact on damage output. As a result, Solby's power damage builds have significantly dropped performance. Yeah, they they gutted one wolf pack. Now that the obfuscating factor of the oh good good use of the word obfuscating uh, factor of this burst window has been reduced, there is a lot of room to improve the damage on core ranger weapons that Soul Beast and Core Ranger can use. These will improve sustained damage in normal Ranger play and give options that may help Soul Beast players uh, give high-end uh, viability. Um, uh, one second, I am going to... I, I've just been sent a link in Twitch chat about additional news. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So slightly off topic for just a second. Um, there is a bug right now. I'm not going to show a video of it. I, I have one, and I've called it seizure-inducing video. And it's basically if the aim-assisted rocket from the engineer uh, hits a target with a very large graphic, like a world boss or a strike mission boss in some cases, the flash of the rocket explosion, it covers the whole screen. Times that by three, four, five, six engineers, and it's just constant, like, epilepsy just exploding all over the screen. It gets really bad. Uh, like, I myself was just like this, and like, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm prone to migraines, but not seizures, but it was bad. Um, I, I'm one of many people that submitted video footage straight to the devs of the bug report on that. Uh, it, it looks like we've got feedback on that. Someone says, any word on the uh, rocket animation on large bosses? And he said, fix incoming. So, they know they're working on that. Wonderful. Glad to hear that. Thank you for showing me that. Okay. So, buff to core ranger weapons. So, that means this is going to affect all rangers. Uh, so, uh, here we go. Let's take a look here. Longbow. 
long range shot, that's the one, increase the damage multiplier from uh, 0.7 to 0.9 to 0.9 to 1.1. The reason there's a dash there is a uh, long range shot. The damage is higher the further the target is. So this is the, the minimum damage for, you know, if they're close and upper damage if they're far away. Um, that means the lowest possible damage of the new longbow one will match the highest possible damage of the old longbow one. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty cool. Um, great sword. Uh, slash increased damage multiplier, multiplier from 0.64 to 0.8. Almost a 33% increase. Very nice. Uh, enduring swing. Actually, I think that's closer to like 25, but still very substantial. Enduring swing increased damage multiplier from 1.3 to 1.4. Short bow uh, crossfire. That's the one that stacks up bleeds on the target. Uh, damage multiplier increased from 0.4 to 0.5. The bleed duration when not flanking increased from 1.5 to 2 seconds in PvE only. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, Ranger shortbow skills, all, pretty much all of them, are significantly better if you hit the target anywhere other than the front. If you hit them in the side or the back, it's way more damage or more duration on the debuffs. Uh, so this is just less penalizing when you hit the front. Uh, ref try refreshing. It looks like they fixed the page. Okay, let me take a look here. Oh, wonderful. Nice. Okay, so they fixed the, the web page formatting. Thank you. All right, Poison Volley. Uh, Shortbow 2, I believe. Damage multiplier per hit increased from 0.25 to uh, 0.3. That's really small. Most of the damage from Poison Volley comes from the poison, not from the direct damage. But, you know, hey, it's a buff. You know, why not? Uh, main Hand Axe Ricochet. Damage multiplier increased from 0.8 to 0.9 in PvE. I got beef with Ricochet, chat. Back when Guild Wars came out, back when Guild Wars 2 came out, Ricochet hit three targets. It went hit, bounce, bounce. So if you had two enemies in front of you, it would hit the first enemy twice. Even the little icon that it still uses to this day shows two bounces on the graphic. I'm not logged into my ranger, so I can't show you right now. But once upon a time, they nerfed it to where it would only bounce one time. And I gotta say, I ain't never heard anybody complain about Axe 1 and killing Centaurs too quickly. Bring back the second bounce! The bounce, the tooltip demands it. Okay, I'm done. Split Blade, that's Axe 2. Damage multiplier per hit increased from 0.1 to 0 0.5. What? Okay, so Split Blade, most of the damage from that still comes from bleeds. It, 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 that's the one that you throw five axes in kind of a spread like a shotgun. Uh, and if you're right next to the enemy, it puts five, uh, all five hits do bleeding on them. Um, but they are taking the power scaling of the impact and multiplying it times five. Wow. Winter's Bite, that is the three. The, the Axe 3 is a weird one. The Axe 3 scales very well with both power and Condi. It does a lot of bleed. It does chill, which is great in PvP. And it, it hits pretty hard. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a favorite of many rangers in many PvP and open world builds, whether you're power or Condi. Uh, but they're increasing the power scaling from 1.25 to 1.8 in PvE only. Uh, one Hand Sword. That's main hand sword. Slash, uh, damage multiplier 0.7 to 0.8 in PvE. These are all PvE, I'll stop saying that part. Crippling thrust, uh, damage multiplier increase from 0.7 to 0.8. Precision swipe, damage multiplier from 0.96 to 1.4. Almost a 50% increase on that one. Monarch's leap, damage multiplier increase from 1.25 to 1.8. Again, almost 50% increase. Serpent strike, damage multiplier increase from 0.8 to 1.5. Almost double. Almost double. Now, Serpent Strike, a majority of the damage comes from the poison it applies after the hit. However, again, you can't really complain about double, you know, the, the power hit. Um, and, I, yeah, I, I will say, uh, again, earlier, because, like, you know, this affects all rangers. And I, I mentioned even, I specifically mentioned, uh, I was comparing Druid while supporting damage to Mechanist while supporting damage. It's, it's not even close. It's, like, 2k Druid. Uh, three maybe uh, on a good day uh, versus you know seven eight nine k mechanist uh, when supporting. Um, this will this will help them. This this will help with that just a tiny bit. Uh, it's cool. It's cool. I like it. Uh, the offhand dagger crippling talon. Uh, that's the ammo skill. It holds two charges. They throw the knife and then it does a cripple and a bleed. Um, damage multiplier increase from 0.75 to 0.9. It's mostly a condition damage skill, but a little more power damage on the hit. Uh, main hand dagger, that's soul beast only, only soul beast can use main hand dagger. Double arc, um, damage multiplier increased from 0.5 to 0.8. Double arc, is that, that's either the one or the two. 
Uh, but the, the Soul Beast main hand dagger scales extremely well with power and Condi both. Uh, that, thank you, chat's got my back. It's the skill too, which uh, it does a lot of um, conditions and it also hits quite good. Uh, yeah, all right, that's, that's cool, that's cool. Um, I'm, I'm happy for the Rangers. I am happy for the Rangers. Uh, yeah. And just in case if someone's gonna read this, like, oh no, Rangers, Longbow getting a buff, they already killed me in PvP. Usually if a Ranger pops you in PvP from a mile away, they did, they just popped Sikkim, they popped one wolf pack, they hit you with a four to knock you down, and then they killed you with the two, which is rapid fire. It's rare that they are killing you with just long range shot, um... Also, the buff, I'm realizing as I'm saying this, this is all PvE only. So actually, none of this even affects PvP or World v. World. Yeah, edit that out. I'm not even sending this to Noxie. <laughs> uh, I'll just leave my shame in the video. Okay, so this is all PvE only. All PvE only. Okay, dumb muck. All right, moving on. Revenant, uh, also, uh, thank you, SM Fox. Appreciate that. I'll thank all the new subs soon. Uh, Revenant Invocation. We are adding the missing plus 5% critical hit chance via traits in PvE. Roiling Mist. Increase the critical hit chance applied by this trait from 20% to 25% in PvE only. It's going to Roiling Mist. So Warriors, if you're wondering where your 5% crit went, it went to Herald. It is now under Invocation. You can find it if you look for Roiling Mist. I'm sorry. It's probably too soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang it. Ah, there goes all my viewers. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've... Ugh, is there no... Is there anything for Warrior today? Elementalist, Tempest, Engineer, Mechanist, Ranger... Herald. Lucky number seven, baby. Is that it? Is there nothing for Warrior today? What? What? Even I know. Oh boy, okay, let's keep reading. Uh, Herald. The June 28th update introduced a source of group quickness to Herald via Draconic Echo trait. I did not do any testing of that myself. From looking at videos from other content creators, it looks like it's pretty rough. The skill rotation is very tight and has little room for oh error. Oh boy, he coming. <laughs> Dang boy, <laughs> he thick. Speaking of thick warriors. <laughs> Uh, the skill rotation is very tight and has little room for error, which can result in reduced uptime on quickness. We're increasing the duration of quickness applied by Draconic Echo to improve build viability here. Draconic Echo increased the quickness duration applied by the straight from 1.5 seconds to 2 in PvE only. Now, that doesn't seem like much, that's, but that's like the exact same treatment pretty much that Scrapper got. Uh, when Scrapper originally got Quickness, it took four or five gyros to maintain it. Now, it takes like, uh, let me, let me get it in front of me. It takes like two gyros and a tool belt skill and a heal skill to keep it up. So originally it was like our whole bar was like on lockdown to keep up Quickness, but now it's, it's not as bad. It's not as good as, you know, Firebrand, but it's not as bad as it was. So that's, uh, honestly, I'm happy for the Heralds. I hope that makes it viable. We will see. We will see. Um, I'm, I'm going to refresh the page and hope something for Warriors appears. Nope, nothing appeared. Okay. All right. Uh, was there anything else on that Reddit post? Uh, let's see. The team wants to make it right. We are motivated. Uh, fix incoming. And then they post a thing here. Uh, let me do a little, since he's apparently posting on here right now, let me just do it, hit F5. Is there anything else from him? No, there's not. Uh, okay. Well, le let's go back up to the top, because now, now I'm really thinking about it. Let me control F Warrior. So July 19th, which is like two and a half weeks away, will at the very least fix the 5% crit thing. Um, we may make additional changes in this release as we continue to monitor game metrics and your feedback, but from a development best practices standpoint, we'll be focusing our attention on the following release. Okay, so, yeah. And then August 2nd, uh, said was Warrior Banners and Chronomancer's relatively low damage output. Alright, well, I'm gonna stand by what I said when I tested Warrior for the video I made the other day. Um, if you're a Warrior right now, I per my personal opinion, and it, if, you, if, you, if you disagree with me and you got some math to back it up, throw it in the comments. That's fine. I don't mean warrior. I make mistakes. My personal opinion, after trying it out myself, is abandon banners right now. Don't try to be the quickness guy. Bust some heads. 
Get, and I, I, I mean in the game. <laughs> in the game. Don't go punching people and saying Muck told me to. I'm not going to defend you in a court of law. I mean, get your damage as high as possible. That's it. The end. Just go bust some heads, and that's it. Uh, and then once, you know, once this patch comes out, then, then hopefully it'll get better. But, uh, yeah. That's it. Um... <laughs> Oh, something that was just pointed out to me that I just noticed. The Jade Cannons. Mech Arms Jade Cannons. That is, that is in P... Yeah, that is, that is in all game modes. No, that's not... That one's not in PvE only. No, the, the Jade Cannons did get nerfed in all game modes. Um, the rifle is still... So, the rifle is still strong, but the, the rifle traits... Uh, you know, part of the, the strength of the total damage of the mech was the rifle traits hitting the mech and the, the engineer, and they're toning down the mech. So, real talk, if you're playing a mech, I, I don't know if the, this will be enough for them to, to be happy with it. Because keep in mind, we're getting a lot for very little right now. We're like, beep, and then, you know, tons of damage like we're getting to feel what it's like to have been a mesmer for the last few years for uh, if they played the the li mirage build uh except from 1200 range so it would not surprise me if they were to do more nerfs to mechanus if they left it alone and buffed others that's fine if they nerf mech again i wouldn't be shocked uh i think for the good of the game one of those should probably happen there we go all right uh yeah that's it. So that's it for today. I, I think this is really cool. I'm not a, I don't consider myself a ranger main anymore. I think this is really awesome. And I'm very because again, this is every single ranger. Every single ranger, no matter what build they play in PvE, is gonna get more out of their weapons. And I'm very much looking forward to see what they can do with that. That's very cool. So yeah. That is the notes for today. And, uh, yeah, if you got any questions, problems, thoughts, concerns on anything like this, or if you want to call me out on anything, that's totally fine. Throw it in the comments uh, down below. Um, very much looking forward to the seizure-inducing rockets getting fixed as well. Uh, hopefully that will get put in very soon. Yeah. See y'all next time.